Hi friends, welcome to episode 83 of the Quirky Monday Craftcast. My name is Kalisha and you can find me anywhere online as Nadira Tani. I'm coming to you today from my home in Central Florida and today is Thursday, May 2nd. Um, I will give you guys a heads up. Yet another day of weird energy. So, I just, I really didn't want to do you guys like I did you last week and have like the podcast out super late. So I'm trying to push through it and, you know, so if I don't seem as peppy or as up as I usually, I guess, seem, that's what's going on, but it's fine. It happens. Um, If you hear the pitter-patter of little doggy feet, Kiva is sitting right underneath the camera, and Tootie is out in the yard, slowly inching away from the house. She thinks she's slick. Tootie, don't you leave the yard. Anyway, Kiva wanted to pop up and say hi, so there's your weekly dose of Kiva. Why? Dang. And just that quickly, I am covered. I'm covered in your furs, Kiva. Keep them to yourself. Um, The shirt that I'm wearing was a gift from my friend Tiffany for Christmas. It says, what does it say? (laughs) Never stop looking up. And it has the constellations that are part of the Zodiac. So, yeah. I love it. The only thing that I wish, who I don't know who made this shirt, but the only thing I wish they would have done was make the stars glow in the dark. Like, that would have been so awesome. But it's still, like, crazy awesome anyway. So, yeah. For today's um, bright spot, I wanted to highlight all of you guys because... The amount of comments that I got on last week's video when I was talking about how I was having a rough week, the amount of encouraging comments that I got was just like mind blowing. Um, It made me feel so like seen and acknowledged and when you're feeling or rather when I'm feeling, you know, down or, you know, get into those spirals. Having people say, like, it's going to get better, you're going to be okay, just keep pushing through, we're here for you, like, all of those things was just, it was a, it was a lot of what I needed. So thank you so much for being the bright spots in my life. Thank you for taking the time to leave those encouraging comments. It meant so much to me. Thank you guys. So, yeah. You guys are my bright spot. Um, Another bright spot, and this is is another one of my bright spots. Um, My best friend's birthday was this past Monday. And the Sunday, like the day before, I was able to FaceTime her and so we were able to talk and catch up and I got to talk to her son who is two now and he's got so much personality like oh my goodness so much personality and such a little being but um, yeah I was I FaceTimed them like it was around dinner time so they were finishing up eating and um, I was able to be Um, like there during like bedtime story time and he basically has the whole story not even basically he has the whole story of where the wild things are memorized so she was turning the pages and he's like telling the story and it was the cutest thing ever like y'all 
I am a very emotional person and just sitting there and watching him like read the story was just I ended up in tears and it was just so special for me to be able to um, have that experience with my best friend and her son so thumbs up for technology y'all <laughs> but yeah so those those were two bright spots that I wanted to share with you guys and I promise I will definitely get back into sharing you guys' bright spots. Um, matter of fact, I read um, a comment on last week's video that had a shareable bright spot in it. So I'm gonna have I'm going to insert um, a video of me sharing that bright spot because I don't have my phone with me, therefore I cannot read it. Um, so I'll insert that here. So um, I got my phone. And the shareable bright spot this week comes from Melinda, aka Yonder Woman. Hi! This little dangle bit. It says, My bright spot this week was getting a new kettle. It boils the water to different temperatures depending on what type of tea or coffee you're making. That is so great for a tea or coffee drinker. Um, the kettle that I have does that too and I can now successfully and pretty confidently brew white tea it's, it makes me feel like a real adult so thank you so much Melinda for sharing that positive that bright spot um, you know leave a comment down below of what your favorite tea is I would like to know. All right, back to your regularly scheduled programming. So yes, if you want to share your bright spots, like I always um, ask if you want to, you can share them in the comments down below of something positive that happens to you, or um, you can share it over on Ravelry and our group. We have the Quirky Monday Craft, I can't even talk, the Quirky Monday Craft Cast Ravelry group. Um, and in there, <clears throat> And in there, we have the um, Bright Spots thread. And you can share your Bright Spot over there. Um, but I just love that we are creating like positive pockets. <laughs> positive pockets. But um, yeah, I love it that you know there's a space over in our Ravelry group that you can go and just read about good things happening to people. I think ants are biting my feet. That's not a Bright Spot. But I love that you can go over to our Ravelry group and have a space where you can just read like all these positive things because sometimes when you're having like a down day or a low day or you're just not feeling your best, like reading the good things that are happening around you can help you to identify more good things that are happening to you, you know? So, thanks guys. Okay, I put Tootie inside so she doesn't yell at the neighbors. And I have, yes, yes, re, like, reposition the camera so that Kiva can be on camera too if she decides to ever look up. Um, yes, let's get into the crafting. So, we've got some finished objects and finished projects. Um, the first finished object that I have like this big let me find it here's my first finished object it is tiny and I love it this it looks a mess okay all right we're gonna do it like this I had put it in a little a little skein because why not but this is the Darth Scabrous Scabrous? I think so. Darth Scabrous fiber bumps that I got from Adrian of the Freakish Lemon podcast like a couple years ago. I won it in his Sith and Spin. Um, and this is the bit that I spun on my drop spindle. Don't you bark at the neighbors. This is the bit that I spun on my drop spindle. 
and then I plied it on my wheel. And as you can see, it's like greens, reds, blacks, whites. I think that's all that's in there. And it's a bunch of different fibers. Let's see if I have the, yes. This is the bag that it came in. And this is, this. these are the specs. It is the Dark Scabrous, Darth Scabrous, Scabrous colorway. Um, I had two ounces. It had, it was made up of olive green and mint superwash wool, red mohair, black New Zealand parandale, red, white, and black silk noil, and white and red BFL. So that's everything that was mixed in there. Ma'am, can you sit down? Sit. Thank you. So that's everything that was mixed in there. And there were spinning fluffs from the Freakish Lemon. If you don't watch his podcast, you definitely should. He's like an epic dabbler in all the things, which I really appreciate. So that was, the single was spun on my drop spindle on this one. And this is just a drop spindle that I made uh, from a cup hook, a dowel, and a, what do you call these things? A medallion, a wooden medallion that I got from the craft store. And it is loose. Yeah, there we go. So, as you may have noticed, there's no more fluffs in here because I spun all the rest on my spinning wheel. And last week when I was talking about my spinning wheel, um, I had mentioned that when I bought it, it didn't have the drive band, so I had to buy a replacement drive band. And when it came, I put that thing right on the spinning wheel and just was like, we gonna do this, we're gonna learn. Um, and yeah, like jump in feet first. Are there mosquitoes out here or something? I feel like I'm just getting bitten up by, oh, yeah. It's mosquitoes out here, guys. It wasn't ants that were biting my feet. It was mosquitoes. So I'm gonna show you this bobbin and then we're gonna move this whole thing inside because I don't feel like being dinner. Oh my word. I knew something was biting me. All right, so this is the whole bobbin. And this is the singles. And you can see there's some really overspun bits some underspun that doesn't even look like it was spun at all right there like but I'm super excited about it so um this is all the singles so now what I'm going to do is wind this off into a cake I think and then two ply it from the cake like from the beginning and end of the uh, strand now I have a segment in a little bit where I'm going to talk about the spinning wheel. Um, oh my gosh. I can't. Okay, guys. So we have relocated. I'm sitting on my bed. So if Kiva decides to get up, there's going to be a little camera shake. Pretty much every time I move, there might be a little camera shake. So apologies. But I've got at least three to four mosquito bites in just that little bit of time I was outside. No bueno. Welcome to Florida. <laughs> All right, so we were talking about this Darth Scabrous spin. Now, any other time that I mentioned this on the podcast, I definitely said Darth Scabrows because, yeah, that's what it looked like on the writing, and I never Googled it until the other night and um yeah evidently Darth Scabrous was some kind of like leader of the zombie hordes in the <laughs> Star Wars universe I don't know that's what I got from like a very very brief googling so yeah if you know who this is leave a comment down below tell me a story but yeah 
So, um, I had told you guys that I'm going to wind it off into a cake and ply it from both ends. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with it because, um, part of me is like, oh, you know, I'll just do a weaving with it. But part of me is like, I kind of want to make something that I can use with it. So who knows? It really just depends on how much is actually on here or not on here, how much I get in the end. Um, my other little bit, which I have no idea where I tossed it in my running to get back inside. It was only like, I think it was 24 feet. So that's what? Eight? Eight yards? Yeah. Yeah. I have eight yards of that two ply. And I don't even know what I did with it. I probably left it outside with the mosquitoes. Oh, no, I didn't. Here it is. Found it. So I have eight yards of this two ply. So maybe I'll weave with this and then do something bigger and funkier with this. <gasps> maybe I could like do a shawl and have like this be like a contrast stripe in it. That would be that would be pretty cool, I think. So yeah. I'm going to apply this this afternoon. Um probably when I finish filming this. But I'm going to I'm going to do like the rest of the crafty bits and then we'll come back to spinning because I have thoughts and we'll get into that in a moment. So those are my finished objects and half finished object for spinning. I have another half finished object. It's not even really a half finished object. I guess these technically could be 100% finished if I wanted to wear tube socks, <laughs> but don't. So I have my man on the moon socks. Um, which one is the second one? Which one is the second one? This one. So I started these socks and they're, um, they're tube socks right now. Um, and I'm going to do cut in afterthought heels whenever I feel like it. Um, but these were from um, like minis that my friend Jen forgave me. And um, I weighed them and they were pretty much the same. I think there was like maybe a difference of like one ounce, not ounce, one gram. Um, <laughs> so I did the first sock, which was the heavier ball, evidently. And then when I got to the second sock, I ran out before I got to the same length as the first. So I just added more rows in the toe color. So you can see that there. Um, so yeah, not even something that you would ever really notice. No, not even something that you would ever notice, period, unless they were laying like this. And then who's going to be like, oh, that sock is different than the other one? Nobody said nobody ever. The way that I do my cut in afterthought heels, um, I follow, I do the method that um, Kirby Werby shows. Um, and if I remember, I'll link that below. Um, but that's how I do them. And when I knit socks regularly, um, I'm a row counter. I don't knit to measurement. I knit to rows, which I know can fluctuate or does fluctuate based on the yarn. So if it's like a significantly different, like thickness of yarn, like if it's a little bit thicker, like with Patton's Croy, that yarn is a little bit thicker. So I don't knit to the same row count. But if it's like your typical run of the mill sock yarn, then the foot of my sock after I finish the heel is 72 rows, I think. And then I do um, my preferred toe method, which is a rounded toe. So what I'm going to do then is I count, let me show you on the one where the yarn goes all the way down. So I start at the beginning of the toe and I'll count back 72 rows and then that's where I'll cut in the heel. And then because I like to have a little bit of extra like 
room over my instep. Um, I'm going to knit, I think this one I'm going to test out knitting three rows, like around the, the heel hole. I'm going to knit three rows even and then start the decreases. Um, in the past, I've knit five rows, but that was too much. Um, so I'm going to try three rows and see if that works. And then I knit just basically a wedge toe where you knit one row and then you decrease one row and knit and decrease down to a certain number of stitches. I decrease down to 12 stitches, 10 or 12 stitches. I think it's 10 actually, 10 stitches on each needle um, for the heel and then I kitchener it. Um, and with the toes, I go down to 12 stitches on each needle and then Kitchener. So there you go. There's a crash course in how Kalisha does her um, afterthought heels. Uh, what else? This yarn that I have for the cuffs is the very last dregs <laughs> of uh, Dance With Me Beast, which is a colorway that was dyed by... Um, Yarn Cafe Creations like a few years ago. Like this was on my very first podcast episode. So this is officially done. Well, okay, not totally done. I have like this much more yarn left, like a teeny tiny ball. So I think what I'm going to do with that is, um, I don't know, maybe I'll start like a scrap ball. I don't know. We'll see. Or maybe I'll use it as leader thread for my spinning wheel words guys words so those will get their heels whenever I feel like it this is the yarn that I use for the toe it is knit picks um, stroll in the sour apple colorway and yeah camera shake um, the second uh, finished object that I have is my finished project. It is Weaving Tales, my Napo Rimo poem collection. Um, all transparency, I think I said this in the last episode or something like that, um, was that I did not write a poem a day like I intended to. I would like go a few days without writing something and then like do a chunk and like catch up. But um, they're all done now. I have all 30 of my poems. So if you're new and this is your first time hearing about this project, um, April was natural, natural, national poetry writing month. So what, um, poets will do during that month is do a poem a day. Um, as I just said, I didn't do a poem a day. I did 30 poems. So I counted as a win. Um, my poems, I decided to um, do them like themed around fiber and knitting and crocheting and yarn. And there's even some spinning um, poems in here. I think there's like one or two spinning ones. Um, at the very beginning of the project, I wanted to have 10 poems about the process of starting a, pro a project, 10 poems for... Um, the work in progress and then 10 poems about the finished object. I think I got six poems in and then I realized that what I wanted to do was just write poems about this topic. So I removed all of those like barriers and like guidelines from like and boundaries from like the, the subject matter and just allowed myself to write whatever fibery poem wanted to be written. And I think, I think that was really good because I, as, as cool as I think the original idea was, I know that it would have started to like, um, like swallow up any inspiration because I'd be like, Oh no, I need a poem about X, Y, Z or blah, blah, blah. Right. So, I'm going to share a couple of the new poems with you, and as usual, um, if you want to see all 30 poems, they will be posted on my Instagram and my highlights. 
All right, so let's do number 26. Watching my hands work with yarn is like seeing a spider build a web. Uh, number 28. My mother taught me chain stitch and double crochet, a crafty heirloom. And number 30. This intersection of yarn love and poetry brought me so much joy. So I am going to be typing up the rest of the poems and putting them in my highlight on Instagram. So I definitely encourage you to go ahead and check them out. So many, okay, not so many, like three of you guys, and I feel like that's a lot of people to suggest the same thing. Like three of you guys have, you know, um, suggested that I get them published like in a little book or something like that. Um, I haven't looked into it, but it does sound like something that would be fun. So who knows? Someone said that one of their family members did a self-publishing through Amazon. Um, I've also heard of Lulu.com. I don't know if that's still active, but back when I was like active in the poetry world, you know, all of the poets were getting their chat books published through Lulu.com. Like all of the cool poets. I was not a cool poet. I was just like always around. Side note. I was so like down for anything poetry like whenever my friends are like oh we're gonna go to such and such place they're having an open mic I was like when do I need to be in the car you know just all like whenever there was anything poetry I was there so much so that one of my poet friends um, she was called Miss Brown like her stage name was Miss Brown and uh, she started calling me the poetry junkie and it like caught on to where whenever um, I was in like that area, it was in Birmingham, Alabama. Whenever I was in that area and like doing an open mic or something like that, they'd be like, oh, it's the poetry junkie. And I'm like, <laughs> so yeah, fun story about college Kalisha. <sighs> Sorry about that. Tootie's under the bed being a gremlin. So if there's awkward cuts, it's because she's barking. So yes, that is all of my finished objects slash finished projects. I lie. I tell lies. There is one more finished project. So one of the things that I got from my spinning wheel um, was a basket because like when I got the spinning wheel all of the little bits and bobs and stuff were in just this plastic bag that was hanging on the back of it and I was like I need something that's cuter than that <laughs> so I went to the Goodwill look who came home hi oh look your glasses are like purple in the reflection yeah, sure. they did that was fancy honey I'm home <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, so hopefully the dogs will be quiet now that Lamar is home and they like him better than me. Kiva runs out the room. It's because he gives them ice cream. Anyway, um, I went to the Goodwill and I got this basket, which I'm pretty sure is a trash can, but... So this is what I have attached to the front of my spinning wheel, or I guess the back, whatever. It's hanging off my spinning wheel. And I crocheted this little like hanger. And I crocheted this from the sock yarn that I plied together when I was first learning. Well, I'm still learning, but the sock yarn that I plied together to practice with. And so this just goes over like the the back pole of my spinning wheel and just hangs there with all of the stuff in it. Um, yeah, so now that's all of the finished objects. Um, so let's talk about some works in progress. The first one we're going to talk about is my retreat shawl. So last week I was telling you guys how I started this shawl just 
because I needed like something to hold on to. I am using this um, Remix Light. I don't remember the colorway. I have lost the ball band because evidently that's what I do. But it is so pretty. It's this really pretty purple uh, with like pink and white flecks in it. And I just think it's so cool. Anyway, so last when you guys saw it, it was about this big. Now we have gotten to this. Oh, it's see-through. Well, this is going to be nice for like summer in Florida. Why am I holding this in the most awkward way possible? Come on, Kalisha. Work smarter, not harder. So yeah, this is where we are so far. And this progress keeper, well, you can't really see it, but there's a progress keeper right here that marks um, half of the number of stitches that I need before I go to the next part, like um, the next part of the shawl. So the retreat shawl is by um, Dawn Henderson, who's also known as Dawn.Landix on Instagram. And this is, I think this is her most recent release. Um, but it is a reverse stockinette shawl that ends with a, um, like a cable motif on the edge, like on the long edge. So, yeah. So that I don't have to count like all the stitches. I marked, I marked off when I got to half and then, um, I'm just like gonna work until it looks like half and then fold it in half and see how many stitches I need to go because I don't feel like doing all that counting so yeah this has definitely been my sock knitting um this past weekend uh my me Lamar my brother-in-law and my friend Tiffany went to a comedy show and I knit through like the whole thing so I think during the comedy show I knit like this much on the shawl um, so that was pretty cool and it's really really relaxing and just completely plain and what I definitely needed so so far so good I do enjoy the pattern it's written in a very like clear and to the point way which I really appreciate um, my next work in progress is my prairie winds shawl and this is a pattern by jaya lakshmi and i have made it to the border yay make sure there's nothing else in here i need to show you guys okay so this is a in the in the pattern it says it's a heart-shaped design i'm not entirely sure what makes it a heart-shaped shawl but um it's like something like that, I think. Um, it's definitely too many stitches on the needle right now to be able to spread it out and like actually see the shape. So once I finish this, I'm gonna take it off of the needles like when I cast off and it'll be like, surprise, this is my shape. So I finished the main body and these stitches here, or uh, stitch markers here are the extra rows that I put in. The giraffe here is marking where the pattern actually ends, um, but I want it to make mine wider. So um, <laughs> last week I was talking about like all the math that I went through to uh, figure out how many extra rows I would need to do. And I don't know what I was doing because the next day I explained it to Lamar and he was like, oh, well, if, if your lace is a multiple of 12 and then you have like five extra stitches, this row is a multiple of 12 with five extra stitches. So you just need to maintain that. Every two rows after that increases by six. So you just need to do, you just need to do uh, more rows in sets of four in order to stay at your stitch count and I was like 
why you had to make it so simple. I was like, using calculators, and all kinds of foolishness. There was division, addition, multiplication, like, <laughs> uh, it's nice to be married to a math teacher. But yeah, so needless to say, all that extra work I did could have been avoided if I had just been like, hey, babe, got a math problem for you. But yeah, so this is the this is one complete um, row of lace, like one complete repeat. That's the word. One complete uh, repeat of the lace pattern. So um, I'm going to be starting back over at this row. And there's two more uh, repeats that have to go on here before it's finished. Um, it's really, really easy lace. I put all of these stitch markers on here to mark <laughs> to mark my uh, individual lace repeats, lace motifs, because oh my legs are falling asleep. Um, because I like one of the worst things I think can ha that can happen when you're like knitting lace is um, you mess up like all the way over here and you don't realize it until you get to the end and then you have to tink back that whole row. I'm not about that life, so I put stitch markers every 12 row, every 12 stitches so that I know that as I'm going back, if there's a problem in any one of these, if they don't have 12 stitches, I know exactly where the problem is. So um, I, I check my work on the, on the way back when you're just purling straight across um, because if there's a missed stitch, it's probably just a yarn over and I can just pick that yarn over up and keep it moving. So yeah, um, the yarns, this is uh, Mitchell's, Mitchell's Creations in the Old Lucky You colorway and it is a Stellina yarn. Let's see if I can get that sparkle. No? Maybe? Not at all. You just don't want to sparkle. That's fine, but there is sparkle in there. And um, this, which is this, is um, Emerald Way by Birch Hollow Fiber. And I am really liking them together. I'm excited about this, y'all guys. Now, the bind off for this, um, this shawl includes beads. And I bought two different like colors of beads. And I'm not sure which one I want to do. So, let's... Doing everything the hard way again, Kalisha. So you have this one, which they're just like iridescent, like iridescent white beads. Right? And then we have these, which are summer iridescent, summer pearlized. Just, but all of the colors in these beads are in the whole shawl. So I don't know which way I want to go. I think I want to go this way. I don't know. What are your opinions? Tell me. Never mind. I'm doing this one. Like looking at it in the computer screen, I feel like this is more the vibe of the whole shawl. And I feel like this one is going to be too like contrasty at the very end. So. Thanks, guys. <laughs> so yeah, so those are going to be the beads that I use for my um, my bind off. And yeah, so let me put them back in here so I don't lose them. And these are going to get returned to the store. And that's everything for my current works in progress. Um, so stashquisitions. The only thing that I have to show you guys today is a new pen. So um, this pen is from Nerdbird Makery. I don't know what I was about to say just now. But this, it says Craft with Care. And um, this is also Nerdbird right here. This is a collection of some of my like most favorite pens. 
Um, all the rest of my enamel pins are on like a little pennant, like uh, in my little crafting nook. But I think what I'm going to do is start spreading over here and bring some of those pins um, onto this side of my jacket. I am going to be getting locking pin backs because my heart would be broken if any of these went missing. But this pin, uh, Tao showed it on her Instagram and she was saying how this was the first pin that she has offered with two skin tones, which um, I really appreciate when um, pin designers have that option. And also a thing that I really um, appreciated about the way that she went about designing this image is that um, she said that she was really thinking about what hairstyle to give um, the person in the picture because she didn't want to just change the skin tone, right? And I really appreciated that because sometimes you do see that where it's like obviously an image of like a white person that the skin tone has just been darkened to be like, oh, now it's a black person. No, <laughs> it's really not. <laughs> um, but I appreciate the extra thought that she went into uh, with that pen. So yes, I do really love the imagery and the style that Tao has with her work uh, with uh, Nerd Bird Makery. So if you have not checked out her work, definitely do that. Um, somebody asked me last week where my tote bag came from. I have the mm, Follow Your Bliss tote bag, which is a tote bag with this girl on it. And um, that is from Nerd Bird Makery. So yes, that's the only thing I have for stash positions. I so now we're going to get back into spinning um, because I've had time to I've had time to use the wheel. Obviously, I spun all of those singles on it, did some plying and stuff like that. Um, so, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I have some beginning remarks. Okay, so this is my spinning wheel. Um, I've had it for, I had it since Easter. So whenever Easter was, a couple weeks ago. Um, the first spinning that I did on it was this. This is, um, a ball of Patton's Croy socks and Serenity sock, uh, Premier Serenity sock plied together to get this. This was my practice in like learning like the rhythm of treadling the wheel and like guiding yarn into it. So that's what that practice was. Um, then when I got my drive band, um, I wanted to like spin for real. So that's when I started the uh, Darth Scabrous um, spin. Uh, one thing that stood out immediately um, with this wheel, and this is a babe wheel. Um, their specialty is um, wheels made of PVC pipe and composite wheelchair wheels. So this is how it looks like in total. <laughs> but one thing that stood out immediately when I first started using it is that, or was that when you're treadling it, it starts to wobble because it is so lightweight. The whole shebang was like getting it right. It was just dancing all over the place. So my solution to that was to treadle with one foot and hold it down with my other foot, um, which can like feel a little awkward so um one of the other things that i like found that was helping was putting the basket on the back of the wheel so the basket that i got it is kind of heavy it has all of like the wheel supplies and stuff in it so the bobbins like extra fiber that i want to spin just stuff is in here stuff for spinning is in this basket and it sits right here. So 
and it hangs on the back of the wheel like this and gives enough weight so that the whole wheel doesn't shift around while I'm spinning. Um, so that's definitely something to be, whoop, that's something to be aware of. Like if you want to get this type of wheel, it is very lightweight and it, it does start dancing a little bit. So um, another thing that I am going to do with uh, this basket, I'm going to put another strap on it to keep it more centered because it does like shift around. Um, what else? I, when I was spinning the uh, singles, the dark scabras, I was getting, uh, I was getting really overspun and I couldn't figure out why. So, um, I took a picture of the bobbin, I posted it on Instagram and I was like, I need help, you know, and just explained the struggle I was having with it being overspun. Like I felt like the yarn wasn't pulling into like like onto the bobbin like it should um and i say pulling onto the bobbin like it should with no concept of actually how fast it should be pulling in so i got a whole lot of like tips and information about like like uh, if i should be treadling faster or like drafting like pre-drafting the fibers and what kind of fibers I was using and stuff like that so um, I really really appreciate like everybody's willingness to help me out so thank you so much so one of the main things that I've learned um, so far was that or things that I'm pretty sure I was doing wrong was how fast I was actually drafting the fiber. I was drafting way too slow. So essentially I was treating my spinning wheel the same way I treated my drop spindle. So with the drop spindle, I would spin the spindle and then I would, I was like a, what do they call it? A spin and park, whatever. So I would spin the spindle, stop it when it got like all the twists in it. I would hold it with my legs and then hold it with my legs and then I would draft the fiber up and let the spin run up the fiber. Now, because I was used to that start and stop kind of um, technique, I carried that over to the wheel, which is not a good look <laughs> because the wheel is not stopping and starting that wheel is still giving you more like twists so if I'm like spinning the wheel right and and I'm just kind of going like this all of this and then I wasn't like also moving at the same time so I've learned that I have to draft and move like draft and move at the same time <laughs> while I'm treadling because if I'm just drafting and pulling my hand back like this this space right here is just getting more and more twist and then that's how I'm getting all of this extra twist in the yarn at least that's what I think is going on we'll see when I get to the next fiber but um so I I kind of learned that I need to treadle treadle faster and more of an even speed according to like a lot of people on my Instagram I also need to play around with the tension um, like how tight or loose this brake band is on the actual flyer. Um, I need to test, like, see how those things change. Um, and I also need to draft faster and actually, like, like let it feed into the wheel or speed onto the bobbin. Um, I realized that I was keeping the fiber on my side. So when I'm like, oh, it's not being pulled in, it's because I'm holding it hostage. I need to let the fiber go. <laughs> so um, it has been a learning experience, like a great learning experience. Um, I have picked up books from the library about it, which I'll show you a couple of those in a second. But when I got towards the end of my Darth Scabra spin, I was noticing that I was able to go for longer periods of time um, spinning without getting um, overspun yarn or like, like super kinked up yarn. So that was awesome.
So let me show you the couple of books that I got from the library. Um, okay, so these are three books about hand spinning that I got um, just like for educational purposes. I have Start Spinning, Everything You Need to Know to Make Great Yarn by Maggie Casey. That's this one. Spin to Knit, The Knitter's Guide to Making Yarn by Shannon O.K. And Spin Control, Techniques for Spinning the Yarn You Want by Amy King. So this book I just got yesterday and it has a lot of information about the different ways that you can spin, how they look, how they, um, how they come out. It's got a whole chapter on how to measure your yarn um, or your finished, uh, finished yarn, which I thought was really cool. This one has a really good section about like how to actually start spinning. Um, so that's pretty cool. That's what I liked of that, like in this book. And this one has a really good section just about wheels, like breaking down the types of wheels and the parts and everything like that and how they work. So I really, um, I really like these three books together. Um, and I'm really excited to really get into them. I just said really so many times, my apologies but I'm quite excited to thoroughly get into them and learn how to use my wheel to the best of its ability. Um, so yeah, that's, that's everything for spinning this week. Um, the next thing after I ply that uh, Darth Scabrous, the next thing I think I'm going to put on the wheel, I think I'm going to go back to that gray fiber that I was playing around with um, just to, you know, for more practice. Um, I had a couple really nice people on Instagram offer to send me fiber that they're not using, um, like uh, fiber from their stash that they're not using. So I'm looking forward to playing around with that to see like what what fibers I enjoy or, or what fibers I like spinning because one thing that I learned from the fibers that I use in my mermaid lock, um, they draft so differently. Um, I think in that I made, um, I made a set of roll eggs from my mermaid lock. I can't pull it out right now. But um, I'll put in a picture of the Rolex. But they, the blue portion of the Rolex are some sort of wool. And the green portion is um, alpaca. And the wool is, is considerably easier to draft than the alpaca. Like, because I started spinning it on one of my drop spindles. And um, it's like the difference was very noticeable. So I'm interested to see how that's going to translate over to the wheel and also to see like if wheel spinning makes a big difference or how these things work. So there's like so much learning and experimentation that I'm, I'm getting to do with this new tool. So thumbs up for that. All right. So that's everything crafty. Um, the last bit is life and whatnot. Oh goodness, set on my feet again. Why did I do that? So the last bit is life and whatnot. And I wanted to talk about the mental health awareness love bombs. So if you have been a viewer, a long time viewer, you'll remember around this time last year, um, I was hosting the mental health awareness love bombing. So what is that? So May is Mental Health Awareness Month and I love doing these small scale yarn bombings where um, you make a small thing, which in this case is an awareness ribbon, 
and you attach a tag to it with an encouraging like an encouraging message or something like that and then you leave those ribbons out in the world last year when I did it I think I I like brought it up kind of late in the month um, so since we we're at the very beginning of May I wanted to bring it to you guys' attention um, let you guys know that this is something that I want to host again um, the hashtag is MHA love bombs and I think for this year I might do MHA love bombs 2019 I don't know we'll see but um, if you want to check out the ones that we put up last year you can tech you can look at that um, hashtag on Instagram um, I have a video tutorial on how to make the crocheted ribbons um, as well as um, a like step-by-step -step kind of um, tutorial that way my goal with the MHA love bombs is to um, spend the first three weeks of the month making them and writing up the tags and getting them all ready so that the last week of May will be our yarn bomb week and you can um, like put them anywhere the way that they're made um, you put a little loop like a hang tag or a hang loop on them so you can hang them pretty much anywhere um, one of the things that I really appreciate about this type of yarn bomb is because they are so small and portable you can make them anywhere and um, people will take them and because they have like encouraging statements on them I feel like um, it's another way to reach out to your community and to like brighten those corners where you exist and where you are so yes mental health awareness love bombs are coming and I would love it if you guys would participate um, make one make a bunch have at it um, I want last year last no that was for September um, last year for mental health awareness month I included or I involved my church where um, I took a whole bunch of blank tags with me to church and just asked people to write encouraging words on these tags and then I used those tags on the um, awareness ribbons that I was crocheting up and I hung them like around you know since I work at the mall I hung some at the mall um, I hung them we went downtown we hung them around downtown just you know I gave them to um, to friends to share out different places so it's definitely a small and accessible thing that you can do the color for mental health awareness month is green so we do um, the different or the green ribbons and yeah I'm excited that um, I'm able to do this again and this year I think last year I was only able to put up or to like drop like 10 or 12 or something like that like I want a whole lot of tags <laughs> I want a whole lot of ribbons to be able to kind of flood my area with these little green ribbons and words of encouragement like that's my goal so yeah um, if you want to participate um, I'm excited I'm excited to share this with you guys um, wherever you do hang them um, take a picture of it post it on Instagram tag it with MHA love bombs or mental health awareness because that way anybody who is searching anything under mental health awareness will see our tags and will see our our love bombs and you never know what a small kindness like how many ripples out into the world that small kindness can leave so I'm excited. I hope you're excited. Mental Health Awareness Love Bombs coming your way. Um, so yeah, that's everything I think. Um, I did start feeling better, like kind of halfway through this podcast, when I wasn't getting eaten up by mosquitoes. Um, 
talking to you guys and knowing that there's people out there that actually listen and look forward to these little videos that I put out is definitely an uplifting thing for me. Um, I spend a lot of time by myself, um, especially weeks like this where I'm a photographer with JCPenney Portrait. And I'm only scheduled based on how many appointments are scheduled. So essentially this week, I worked Sunday and Monday. And there haven't been enough appointments for another photographer to come on um, throughout this week. So I've just been home by myself. And... And having this fiber community, this internet community, um, is very important to me. And I'm glad that I'm, a, I'm able to be a part of it. Um, so, thank you guys for being a part of my universe, as usual. Um, I hope that you are feeling I hope that you enjoy the spaces that that you're involved in um, and if for whatever reason that you're you're not enjoying those spaces or you don't feel comfortable in those spaces if there's something that you can do to to change the culture around you I hope that you find the strength to do that. Um, so yeah, thanks for being part of my universe. Leave a comment down below of something positive that happened to you and, and read the comments of other people's positive moments and, and the good things that are happening to others and celebrate with them. Um, when there was a, there was a, a quote or I don't remember who it's by, um, or, or if it's like one of those proverbs, <laughs> but it said, shared sorrow is half sorrow and shared joy is double joy. So when you're sharing your good things and people are reading those good things and finding joy in your good things, you are doubling and tripling and quadrupling your joy. And when you share the struggles that you have um, and people identify with the struggles that you have and they, they can say, you know, this is something that I experience or I know someone who's also experiencing this and, and they're able to encourage you through that, you are dividing your sorrows. And it's so important for us as individuals to share our experiences because there is nothing worse than feeling like you are alone in a boat struggling by yourself out in the ocean when there are other people in that boat but it's like you all are all sitting on the boat with your backs to each other thinking that you're alone in this boat but you're not and all we have to do is speak up and we would hear the people around us so I encourage you, I implore you, share your stories, share your encouragements, share, share your victories, um, just share your lives with the people around you. Um, and the way this internet is set up, the people around you and the people who are your neighbors are literally the whole world. So, I kind of got on a soapbox there. My bad. <laughs> Have a great day. Have a great evening. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, okay, bye. <laughs> hey, guys. I went ahead and plied that yarn, the Darth Scabras. Scabras. And... Applying, not the same as spinning. Also, 
I understand why people ply from two separate bobbins because plying from the inside and the outside of that uh, center pull the cake, the amount of tangles, whoa. Um, so I definitely need to get some more bobbins. I have two of these in my Etsy cart that I just need to go ahead and buy. And um, I also need to get some dowels to put uh, together the Lazy Kate situation that this wheel has. Um, but yeah, I also went and ran the single back through um, the spinning wheel, like in the ply direction to take some of the spin out and um, I was pretty successful with that. I didn't, like, the single didn't break. And then the single, when I was plying it, it only blo broke once. So, not too bad. And as I was watching, like, the colors come together, um, it was, like, really making me smile. Go away, love bug. <sighs> but, um... Yeah, I know this is supposed to be a Star Wars colorway, but it's really just red, black, and green, and this yarn is so pro-black right now. <laughs> Go away, bug! But yeah, so I'm going to let this sit on the bobbin. Like, that's the thing, right? You let it rest on the bobbin. I don't know. Oh, my hair. But, um, yeah. Yeah. It's done. So all I have to do is when I pull this off, I have a nitty knotty that I made out of PVC pipe. Um, I'm gonna wind it onto there and measure it to see how much, how many yards I have. And then I'm gonna soak it and it'll be done. My very first spin completed on the wheel. So yeah, I'm proud of myself, yeah. <laughs>